You know that it's fun to go out Except I never leave my house I'm either at work or home And it seems kind of pathetic just drinking alone So if you got nothing going on Have some drinks with Ron That's horrible, isn't it? It's just, that's, that's, that's nasty. Oh my God. <laughs> you could probably see that one. <laughs> Normally I start an episode with a lead in, but uh, when you shit your pants on your way past the camera, probably gonna have to call it good right there. But uh, man, man, I tell you. It is, it's been rough. I don't know what it was. I went to my brother's house yesterday uh, for some playoff football and some fantastic ribs. And I drank about a quarter bottle of Jack Daniels, uh, some of my homemade wine, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, it was a Bach from Minhas. It's Huber Bach, which I don't think I'll ever drink again because I'm pretty sure I'm blaming the Huber Bach for the massive, massive, horrendous gas I've had all day today. Uh, and at work, it, it was horrible. I, I was just like, I'm, I'm gonna not mention this. I'll just, I'll just not, I'll just not say anything. Nobody, nobody will notice that there's a haze hanging in this room now. And, oh man, and by my standards, let me just let me just tell you, uh, I'm a connoisseur of farts. Um, I'm bad, man. I'm horrible. Um, put it to you this way: my sister used to be the champion in our family. I'll go ahead and and tell you that it's Stace. But uh, I remember clearly and distinctly one spring. Right around Easter, I believe it was. Um, I remember what time of year it was because my sister ripped one in the house that was so horrible. My entire family, three sisters, my older brother, my mom, and myself, six of us, evacuated the house. We left. We were all standing in the front yard, shivering, still covering our noses, you know, shirts pulled up as my sister's just laughing so hard that she's crying. We actually evacuated the fucking house. That's not even, it's not an exaggeration. That's, sad. That's why I know what time of year it was, because we were outside and it was still kind of cold. But I would rather be shivering than go back in there. You can't make me go back in there. If I, I'm taking a gun, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight this thing. So as I say, my sister used to be the champion. A fart like that, I mean that that that's an epic fart. That's a, that's a fart. That, that thing, that thing's got like a backstory. Like started in the colon one day, you know, it's horrendous. The kind of, as George Garland would say, the kind of fart that would eat stitching out of Levi's. The kind of fart by where is your pants are declared a level two biohazard by the Centers for Disease Control. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't remember the rest of them, but uh, very bad. And let's just say, I've claimed the title from her, and it's not even, it's not even up for debate anymore. you want to talk about fart stories I can beat that one two or three times um, one point in lacrosse uh, had a place on Main Street we we're having a lot of Oktoberfest parties that year October can be a long month when you don't remember what goddamn day it is but uh, yeah we're having a lot of Oktoberfest parties drinking a lot of a lot of beer uh, different kinds of beer eating a lot of whatever's laying around food bratwurst especially and I was ripping them so bad I don't remember why but it was me my roommate 
and one of our buddies, we were all sleeping in my room for some reason. I don't know why all three of us were in my room, but it was horrible. I mean, I just kept doing it and kept doing it. <laughs> one of the guys said, it's, it smells like a Yeti. And the other guy says, no, it smells like a Yeti that's died and begun to decompose. So for a while, uh, it, every time I drop one, it became known as Dead Yeti Ass. And that was a fairly accurate name for it. Uh, honestly, there's another one to the show. Something really wrong going on in here today. Really, there was something really wrong going on in there for many years. As my roommate used to say, uh, <laughs> there's either something really wrong with you, or you have the best colon ever. I said, yeah, I could probably eat a leather shoe and, and digest that bastard. I said, so that's whatever you're doing, it's either really good or it's really bad. But it's one way or the other. Um, <laughs> I don't even know which one to go with next. I have two. One's actually made it into a song. Uh, I play the song now, but uh, I'll just tell you the story. Um, you know, let, let's go with this one first. Um, we went to a Willie Nelson concert in Lacrosse. It was a few years after the Dead Yeti incident. And uh, my mom, my same sister, uh, a couple other people coming up and uh, going to see Willie. So we're getting tuned up before the show. Um, then we go, you know, you have a few beers at Willie. And then we came back, and I had a bar a block from my house, Chubb's Pub, stumbling distance, one block. Oh, that's, that's horrible. This dark beer is not going to help. Dark beer. That's the key with me. It's dark beer. Oh, and, and yet I drink it. But back to the tale. So we go to Chubb's Pub, and we close that place down. Drinking tappers, whatever, all night. <laughs> and my, our, our apartment was fairly small. Uh, I had a fairly small room. My roommate's was barely bigger. Uh, we had a decent sized living room with one couch. Somebody slept there. Then we had what we called the studio, which uh, was essentially a glorified hallway. It was like two hallways wide that the asshole we rented from tried to say was the living room and selling us a three bedroom house. Like, Yes, the living room, where you can't put a couch and a TV. Yeah, the, the, the living room. So, um, there was a futon in there. So I'm sure a couple people on the futon. And we had a couple recliners. And one of my brother's buddies came up, and he had been on like a three-day bender. So, when he finally went, and he'd been up for like 36 hours. When he finally crashed in that chair, he was out, sitting up, and he was out. Um, the problem was that the chair was reasonably close to the bathroom. So, after a night and day of hard drinking, I got up in the morning after the Willie concert, proceeded to go into the bathroom and uh, take a dump. Even, oh, that, that poor ceiling fan. Just, it just, it just didn't have a chance. That, that ventilation fan in the bathroom just... <laughs> It was like, it was like sending a guy with a slingshot against the United States Army. You you just you know you just tip your cap to it, and it, you poor feller, you don't stand a chance. So uh, yeah, I dropped one off in the bathroom, and went back into my bedroom, and didn't know this until I was told later. But apparently, the noxious fumes actually woke the guy up from his dead sleep. <laughs> and he had to go throw up. I literally made a man puke with the noxious fumes. And the worst part about it is, <laughs> the son of a bitch had to go right into the abyss <laughs> to throw up. He had to go into the scene of the crime because that's where the toilet was. He was going to puke in. It's like, oh, dude, you went to ground zero. Why would you? Oh, oh. That that was horrible. Just horrible. Oh, uh, yep. Made a guy puke. 
But that's not even my favorite one. My favorite one is, uh, it was after night of drinking dark beers. All dark beers. I, uh, I don't even know where I was downtown La Crosse. We were bouncing around. I'm guessing it would have been bodegas. Uh, might have been... I've been drinking uh, Pearl Street Downtown Brown, so I might have made a stop at yesterday's, too. Totally irrelevant. The point is, dark beer interacts with me poorly, and I drank a lot of it that night. I had to be up work at 9 the next morning at my fabulous pizza delivery job. Um... And it was like this, like I've been having just a steady gurgling and rumbling, an unholy gurgling going on in there. And uh, that was alright though, because I had the delivery car, I was by myself, I wasn't putting anyone else in harm's way. So, <laughs> and, and I said they were horrible. And by my standards, uh, I've given you the, some backstory. If I tell you they're bad for me, they were bad. Um, and I had to take a delivery to this apartment, and they had you had to be buzzed in. So uh, I hit the button, yeah, pizza guy. So they buzz me in. I open the door, and there's usually a person right at the front desk, because this hotel, it's not, it was more like a hotel um, than an apartment building, because they had the you know, attendant right there. But I was like, shit, I can't, I can't, you know, there'll be the guy. So I open the door, and the guy's not there. And I'm like, perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the door, I'm going to drop ass in the lobby, and then I'll walk through around the corner, get in the elevator, and get upstairs the perfect crime. You know, no one will know. Um, so I do the deed, I leave a giant cloud in my wake. Get around the corner, hit the button, elevator opens, I step in, I hit my floor, uh, you know, enjoying my perfect crime. <laughs> and right, right as I'm enjoying it, the door's about to close, I see a hand come in. It's the UPS guy. Gets his hands in between the doors, and he opens them. They open back up. A hand to Jeebus. The guy takes one step into the elevator. He puts one foot in and he goes, oh, and he walked back out. I, absolute God's honest truth. <laughs> I'll never forget the look on his face. It was sheer horror. It's, he put, oh, and he left. And I went up to the third floor laughing my ass off the whole way. I about had tears. So I give the guy his pizza. I get back in the elevator. I travel down three floors once again. And uh, get down to the bottom. The door opens. I step out. And the whole lobby still smelled like ass. It's like... Good God, I was gone seven minutes and it didn't dissipate. It hung. It hung. If you would have lit a match with the way the doors were sealed, it would have been it would have been a bomb. The the pressure built up. I could just I could just see it would have been one of those high budget Hollywood action movies where the glass shatters out and the doors blow off and horrible, horrible. It hung there. <laughs> I just get this picture in my head of the UPS guy going outside, like trying to brush his tongue off. Like, ah, ah, I taste it. It was horrible, even by my standards. And uh, yet, for some reason, here I am working on my second dark beer, even though I'm still kicking them out like there's no tomorrow. I just, like I said, I just posted on Facebook. If you could have harnessed all all my farts from today, you could probably power a small country. I could have heated Iceland today with the amount of horrible, noxious gas I've emitted. We could have harnessed it, put it in a pipeline, and oh, you'd, it'd have to be burned under very controlled circumstances. You'd probably have to be in a cold room or else it would just, you know, it'd be hard to keep the burn controlled. It would just flame out. So, yeah, 
I guess what I'm saying is tomorrow's gonna be bad too. <laughs> but luckily for you, you can't smell nothing through the internet. So, uh, but this, my cat's been sitting 12 feet away over there. He won't get any closer. And I don't blame him. <laughs> I'd feel bad if I didn't find it so goddamn funny. And with that, it's Ron for Drinks with Ron, signing off.